Tom Beck as our speaker today. And he'll update us on what's happening at W. speech in probably 25 years. I really try to stay on the other side of the camera. <laughs> and, uh, so I, I don't come out from behind the camera too often, so just bear with me here. As you said, uh, I'm a 1987 graduate of the Milton Union. Uh, makes me about 46 years old. This November will be my 30th year volunteering at the station. First thing I did was a basketball game. Um, Jack Adams pulled me out of history class. Hey, you want to take some uh, games for us? That's pretty much how it started. Um, been doing that ever since. Um, I'm a father of three. I have one son that's a sophomore. He's attended Norwich University in Vermont. It's a private military academy. He just got accepted by the Air Force and got an ROTC scholarship. Pretty much paying his way. He's um, going to be a geologist. Very proud of him. He knew he was going to be a scientist since he was in kindergarten. Um, in fact, kindergarten teacher made him write a sign of his goals he wanted in life and he went to kindergarten here at Melbourne. And he was going to be a scientist. He also said he was going to be smarter than his dad. <laughs> that happened ages ago. <laughs> um, I, I have a daughter, she's a senior. She's got accepted to Miami University to the Farmers Business School. Very proud of her. My youngest, he's a young'un. He's only in fourth grade. I got a while for him. Uh, but his big brother is his idol, and it looks like he's going to follow in his footsteps and probably take a similar route. Uh, I do manage a Dollar General store. I have Antoine and Piqua. I spend 48, 50 hours a week doing that. Do this in my free time and, and whenever I can work it in otherwise. I'm going to talk a little bit today about the, the public access station. And I'm not going to go into great detail into it, but I sort of want to just take you through a little, little timeline and how the access station has changed over the years and uh, where it's been and where it's going. We are one of four access stations in Miami County, the other one being in Troy, um, Piqua, and there's one in Tip City, Kit TV, which is um, probably the best one, one of the best community access stations around. And they do a good job being integrated in the community and um, got a good volunteer staff. Um, very great station. If you're ever over there, they're definitely worth checking out. Um, WMPA started up in the mid-80s, Jack Adams, uh, Nancy and Watt Farrar, um, various other names that everybody in this room know were a big part of getting it started up. Um, it started broadcasting around 83, 84, because when it was up and running, I joined around 85 or so. Westwards was very highly um, participating early on in the, in the uh, broadcasting of the cable station. Uh, we are funded, we get a portion of the franchise fees which come into the city, they take a portion of that and they set it aside and that's where we get our financing from. Um, it's very minimal, it's just, it's a very small part of what actually comes in, but uh, as I'll talk about later, we've, we've learned to, to be small, but be able to do big things. Um, 1980 was really the golden age of public access everywhere. If you wanted to get your message out to the community, you would get to the local newspapers, your local radio or TV stations, networks if you wanted to, and your local access stations. You got a message out to those people, those locations, you would get your message out to 85, 95% of the community. Piece of cake. Didn't have the internet, so TV was where the kids went, that's where the adults were, that was the focal point. So you put something on TV, you got the exposure, it got out. Uh, also, it was easy time to get volunteers. Being on TV was cool. It was the thing to do, and that's part of the reason I got involved with it, too. Um, during the late 80s, 89 or so, in, in, a three, in one year we did over 234 individual programs. Just about six or seven of us. It was really amazing. And it was, a, it was the place to be. Our technology was nothing fancy. We kept it simple from the get-go. We ran VH, you know, some industrial-level VHS machinery. And we tried to keep a format and stuff that people could relate to. And if somebody wanted a copy of one of our programs, it'd be easy to just say, here you go, no problem. So, 1990s. <clears throat> 1990s, you started to see a little bit of the change. And inter the internet came along, PCs, computers. And uh, it sort of started to change the scope of getting information out in the community. 
<laughs> the kids were fascinated with the computer's parent. I remember sitting in front of a desktop going on a computer desk in a corner of the room for hours, you know, oblivious to everything that was going on. Uh, so, so the means of getting the message out to the public sort of, sort of diffused a little bit. People started putting websites up. So now, not only do we have all those places before, now places are starting to develop websites. Yeah. And so that was sort of where, where the focus was shifting. You also start to see satellite companies do this. DirecTV sort of came about. You started seeing them push to that. Um, so more and more channels added to the cable team. Um, and it just, it was, it was a sort of a transitional period. You started to hear the word digital video. You started in the, towards the end of the 90s, you started hearing high definition. And you know, where, where was it going to go? What was going to happen? Um, a lot of the access stations in the 90s, we didn't really know where to go. Um, do we want to create websites? Do we want to go digital? The big cost involved was switching over formats on in any television station. Um, so it's sort of a monkey time. Um, 2000s, um, WMPA was still going strong. We, uh, there was a lot of things going on in 2000, so it was, you had convergence. TV stations, radio stations, and by this time we were starting to see video on the internet. It was all sort of coming together in the industry, they called it convergence. And it's still a big driving force of what goes on in all of media, not just public access stations, but network TVs and all that as well. You also began to see these little things. Smartphones, <clears throat> you know. So not only were people in the corner anymore, now they're walking down the road not paying attention to where they're going, <laughs> you know, running into all kinds of things. And, uh, but it's also an opportunity, it's another way to get the message out. You also, um, high definition finally hit. Uh, that more or less took everything that we had in our studio. Once high definition went, poof, it was obsolete. Everything we had built up for years, some of the equipment which we bought, we've been running for 20 plus years. It, it was obsolete. It was, you know, you know, if something broke down, you couldn't get it fixed anymore. And we were really in a crunch um, going into the later half of uh, the last decade there. About that time, not too long after that, Matt came along. I'm like, all right, new manager, new opportunity. I just sat down. I'm like, hey, you know, this is breaking. This is broke. And it, it, it's, time, it's time to fix some things, you know, make a decision what we want to do. I go. So here, here's what we need, you know, here's what we need to do. I go, unfortunately, you're switching from what we had into a high definition. You replace one thing, everything else don't work anymore. So if you want to do it a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit, you know, down the road, you got to get all kinds of adapters, converters that just won't work together. I'm like, the cheapest and best way would be just to clear a house and rebuild a new bag. He saw that he agreed with my wisdom. I was able to find a switcher, which allows us to switch, like you watch a council meeting, you want from camera to camera and add titles and all that. My first ones I looked at were like fifteen, twenty thousand uh, dollars That's a lot of money. The last one we bought cost ten. It lasted us 20 years. I kept digging, kept digging, came digging. I finally found one that was run off a laptop, but it was still a hardware switcher where you had a box and you plug things in and all that for about $2,500. Once I found that, I was able to do some research on it, I'm like, that's what we need. That brought the price down, that allowed us to get new cameras for the council room, that allowed us to get another editor, it really opened up the door. Um, a lot of access stations, Troy, Pippa, they like to have the big toys, you know, all the fancy equipment. We're a small community, we don't have a lot of money. The money's not my money. So, I always try to get find that sweet spot where you got the biggest bang, for the buck. Where's your best value and the lowest dollar? And my predecessors that came along before me, they did a great job with that. And I picked up on it and I tried to carry it on throughout the years. And I can say out of all the stuff we bought since 85, I don't think there's maybe one but one or two pieces that we bought and then really didn't utilize and run it into the ground until our adjusted flat out work anymore. We've been excellent stewards of the resources we've been given over the years. And that goes back to Jack Adams. He was, that was a big point with him. Is this really what we need? Is this going to do the best job? And uh, 
So I, I credit him and a lot of my other peers um, for making sure that we maintain that. Now, well, that sort of brings us up quickly to the present day. It's an interesting time. You know, we still we can we still broadcast over Time Warner from uh, pretty much the Stillwater River to the west. But a lot of people don't have cable anymore. They have satellite. They have you know Netflix. A lot of people don't even you know bother with cable or satellite at all. It's just all internet based. How do we get the message out to them? Because one of our primary goals in addition, in addition to providing entertainment is to get information out. We do council meetings. You know events such as the Hall of Fame inductions. I'm currently working on a documentary to chronicle the demolition of the dam, give a little history about why it was built, how it was used, and why it came down. It's, and we do a show with Carol, um, excuse me, with Susie Spittler and Barbara Cecil called Reflections. Bring people in, we've had the Rotary there, and uh, speaking about their organizations or their times, more of a reflective thing. Uh, those are very important things that we do, and it's something you know, we do in the community that's real unique, and it's just, um, it's grown beyond this community. People, other communities have seen that program and said, we need to do something like that. So it's proven to be an inspiration beyond, beyond the community. But it's a way to say, hey, we are West Melton. We are Union Township. This is where we were. This is who we are. And it's very important. The older I get, maybe I'm getting more sentimental. But it's very important to document that's one area where I think of access station to provide a great service. Uh, information out, you know, city building, council, uh, municipality as a whole. You know, if there's something going on and they gotta get message out to the path, to the masses, like I said, it's not easy anymore. Now you got social media, you got radio stations, you got TV stations, you got Twitter, you know, Facebook. How are you gonna get that message out? So our station in the past few years, and it began when, when Matt was kind enough to allow us to start transitioning over. The equipment I'm buying and using is not designed solely for use for broadcasting on TV. It's also designed sort of forward thinking. It's time for the access station to you know, go beyond the cable lines. A lot of the programs which I do now, I post on YouTube. I have a, you just search WMPA TV on YouTube. You'll, there's probably 200 programs on there now. All the council meetings for the past year or two are on there as well. Um, certain school events, um, if there's uh, no conflicts or there's nobody involved that don't want to be on the internet, I put uh, Gail Jenny and she gives me permission. I've posted some commencement exercises and things like that. They get hundreds of views. Some of them get thousands of views. Yeah, and I found it's a great way to expand the community out as well. You might have that that father who's a soldier overseas and can't be home for graduation, or that grandparent who couldn't make a trip, this is a way for them to get, get on back into the community and feel part of the community. I think this, that is the future of, of public access in our station as well. It's to, it's to help get information out through multiple streams, and it, it's there to bring the outside community the people may have left. It's a way to bring them back. One of my big things moving forward, a couple projects I got working on this year after I finished the dam project this spring, my next thing is to get with Matt and some people in the community. We need to use the facility and the station to promote our community, our village. We got a good council, we got a great city manager, we got fantastic new schools. It's time to grow. How do we get the word out? It's time to grow. Matt's done a great job. He's working on infrastructure. He's fixing a lot. You know, him and the council are fixing a lot of things that need to fix before you can really make that big push. I think it's time. To, we're almost there. It's time to start thinking about how we want to do that and what can I do. You know, with a little video. This is West Mill. Come here. Here we are. And that's a great opportunity moving forward. And I think it's something that a little station like us in a little corner, a walk-in closet in a city building, that would be a great use of the asset. Also, I talked to William again. He's in possession of quite a few of Juan Ferrar's football teams. <laughs> I've heard a lot about the football teams in the 60s and early 70s. I was too young to remember it. You know, but I've heard they were really, really good. Now, I don't know if that's just the people that were there talking, you know, like, hey, I walked through three feet of snow for two miles to get to school. <laughs> I've never seen them. <laughs> a 
but I, you know, but the records speak for themselves. They were obviously some very good scenes. So we're going to get some of those films, and we're going to try to get some on video, combine them with some stats that I'm sure Dr. Quinn has. That program will be gold when it hits the airwaves and gets on the internet. I have no doubt that will be a monstrous thing. And I'm sure there's plenty of other people in the community that have, might have old videotapes of parades or other school events or other things that's a part of that, you know, from way back, I'm hoping that that program will say, hey, I got something to share. Because one of the problems we've had, it's true the internet and all that has made the world smaller, but at the same time, it's made the communities larger and more disconnected, if that makes any sense. It's like I said, it's, it's harder to get the message out to the same number of people you could have just by public access or radio 30 years ago. It's, it's just an interesting dilemma. In some cases, everything's smaller, in other cases, it's much, much harder. I'm sure Matt would agree with you getting, getting the message. And then getting people to hear the message and read the message. I mean, sometimes, yeah, I mean, just sometimes put them, we've tried putting them over water bills. You're amazed the number of people that didn't see that little thing. Uh, so being able to hear and a little visual to go along with the information goes a long way. Um, so that's where we're headed. I also plan to do uh, some business spotlights. Uh, we have the ability now, as long as I have a high-speed internet, I can stream out and stream back to the station and out over the airwaves or out over the internet. So we really got the ability to take the show on the road, so to speak. And uh, I might be able to do a live remote from the 4th of July festival or, or the wrestling invitation would be a great place for a day, just be up on the stage, cut some highlights of some match matches, get people results. That's something I would love to give a shot at down the road. Uh, also would like maybe a bowling tournament at the bowling alley, It'd be a great thing. I've talked with them about doing that a little bit as well. And uh, I do plan, uh, a couple years ago with the last presidential election, I was able to get to both a, a Romney rally and an Obama rally. It took my oldest boy along. I wanted him to see not only experience candidates because he wasn't quite able to vote yet but I want them to see what kind of show they really are. Everything's where it's at for a reason. It's highly structured. There's a lot of spin to it. And I wanted him to see that. He was there he's like, whoa, you weren't getting me that. It really opened him up his eyes and he's got to see beyond the sound, you know, beyond the news clip and the sound bite and all that. It was a great experience. Um, also I took him to Grimes Field. They had a Union of B-25s. They brought in like 25 of them. I took a couple cameras there. I put him right on, right at the end of the taxiway in the loudest spot I could find where they were all lined up. He, he had a blast. It was a great video. It was, it was fun to make. A lot of history taken off in the skies that day. That was fun. And uh, probably the funnest thing, I, I gotta mention this since Jimmy, Jenny's here. Probably my favorite program in the past five or ten years is right before the school opened, a couple months, she took me through the school and gave me a tour. The highlight wasn't the new building. It wasn't all the great technology and just the newness of it all. The highlight and star of that show was Dr. Graham. You could just see a twinkle in her eye. The pride, the pride, the tears. I mean, it was, that's what stole the show. This, that was her vision, you know. That it was just, it was very moving. And it was something I didn't really catch while I was videotaping it, but when I got back to the station, I was starting to cut and cut it and splice it and all that. It became evident that this is her passion. You know, this, this is her pride and joy. This is her baby. And uh, you like seeing those special moments. And uh, they don't come too often, but when they do, it's, it's something, something that you, that you remember. Uh, just a quick little rambling on about where, what we've done and where we're going, what we could do. Is there any questions? Need more specifics on anything? I'd like to say that Tom's, WMPA is a great asset, but Tom is exceptional. We're very, very, very lucky to have him be running WMPA. He does a marvelous job. I, I hold the record of attending more West Mountain Council than <laughs> <than> anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the only person that probably beat me would, would bless her bless her heart would probably be Arlene Clifton my uh, maybe more in her lifetime than I have. I'd say short of short of Miss Clifton, I, I gotta be the record. <laughs>
<laughs> I had Tom in fifth grade a long time ago. Yep. And, you know, he was a good kid then, just like he is now. I got to thank my parents for that. Yep. Uh, I had two very yep. hardworking parents, Richard and Alice Beck and Laura. And, you know, I, I didn't get everything I needed growing up, but I had I had what I needed to have. You, you didn't get everything you wanted, right? <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I didn't get everything I wanted, but I got everything I needed for my parents. In fact, my kids credit their grandparents for their smarts. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> they say it skips a generation. <laughs> I'm like, well, I feel sorry for you when you have kids. I'd much rather raise them. <laughs> so, but, yeah, yeah. very proud of my parents. And they were active in the community. Mom was on, on water boards, council. She's still on the board of elections. Dad was a police officer in town. And I think that's where I get my sense of community. And I feel strongly you do need to get back to where you live. I live in Pickwood now. It's a nice place. My kids grown up there, got a fine education. But this area of this community, it, it's still home. Um, when we, I go to a sporting event, my kids are playing in there, playing melt. I have my Pickwood shirt on, but I have my Bulldog shirt on underneath. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a great community. It's a small town. Um, like, like I was saying, it, it's time for it to grow. And it can grow and keep what's great about the town. We have a council, we have a manager, we have a school board that understand this. And having been 30 years at council meetings and being on the outside looking in, uh, my message is the time is now. And that's where I've taken the station where we're on poised to help make that a reality. Any other questions? All I can say is if uh, Tom says he's not a public speaker, he's wrong. He's not a <laughs> well done, and especially devoting so many uh, hours voluntarily. Uh, not too many people do that, so thank you very much for it. If you'd like to check out, i got the cameras back there, if you have to tell you about that. Also, the laptop I just got a few days ago, and uh, it's got my editing software on there, if you're interested in how we... I'll edit the video and then get it ready for the internet and broadcasting. If you have any questions, come on.